the title of this presentation is not Pax Romana, but Pax Compasio. And you might wonder why, and the response is clear. Pax Romana was based on military power, conquest, terror, and submission. In Rome, people remember this Asurium, one of the seven hills around the city, as a place set aside for the crucifixion of agitators and slaves. And even for the Roman standards of cruelty and violence, no death was more excruciating, more controversial, more terrible than crucifixion. Such a fate, everybody agreed, was the worst imaginable. Without this sanction, Pax Romana would probably have disappeared would probably have collapsed. In any case, one thing is clear. The luxury and splendor of Rome were dependent on the work of the slaves and keeping them in their place. And so the conclusion should be very clear. It was only by means of cruelty and violence that the peace and order of Rome, the so-called Pax Romana, were maintained. And at this point, you could wonder, where was the peace of Urnamu, that king father who cared for his subjects? their lives and their destiny. You could also ask, where was the peace promoted by King Hammurabi? That notorious king of ancient Babylon who had peace, compassion, and justice at the centers of his concerns. No, not Pax Romana. Pax Romana was based on greed, power, and control. It is reported that Caesar took the lives of one million Gauls and enslaved one more million to establish peace and order in the region Gaul. And Augustus, his adopted son, saw peace not as a virtue, but as the order brought to the world at the point of a sword. And true, Roman governors maintained the, keep, maintained the peace of the empire but it was only because they had the power to burn alive, throw to lions, or crucify all those who offended against Rome. How different this perspective on peace was from the perspective on peace depicted in the law of Moses. In that law, peace and order were possible because everybody had duties and responsibilities. The followers of this law were to apply the rules of justice to individuals, both friends and strangers, free and slave, men and women, young and old, rich and poor, 
able and disabled. And how different was Pax Romana from the Pax Compassio promoted in the East, where Chinese philosophers emphasize the ethical principles of protecting others. Confucius, for example, stressed the importance of responsible behavior, translated into goodness, benevolence, in showing a human heart. You are not to cause harm to anyone. Rather, you are called to respect the intrinsic value of every human person. And Mencius, another Chinese sage, pointed out that all humans share a common humanity, moral worth, inherent dignity, and goodness. He also pointed out that a compassionate mind cannot bear to see the suffering of others. Not Pax Romana, then Pax Compassio. Because Pax Romana does not accept that the poor, the weak, the disabled, and the other have intrinsic value. Pax Compassio, on the other hand, is based on justice, love, and compassion. Precisely just as Jesus of Nazareth said, you will have peace and a clean heart if you are responsible for the well-being of the others. If you clothe the naked, if you feed the hungry, if you liberate the captive, if you welcome the stranger, if you heal the sick, if you provide hope to those who have lost it. By the same token, Prophet Muhammad, in trying to find the meaning of life, made it clear. There is a command to protect the weakest members of society and to practice charity. You are to practice social justice, to respect the sanctity of life, and to practice mercy and compassion at all times. You see, not Pax Romana, but a peace based on compassion and justice. Because true peace can only come out of the establishment of compassion and justice. Thirst for fast compassion emerges in places, societies, cultures, or religious tradition where there is a sense of injustice or already the pain of violent abuse. Thirst for past compassion emerges in places where brutal atrocities are taking place, or where there is oppression, slavery, and war. You could say at this point, well, but then what about Pax Britannica? or Pax Americana, and I would say, no, please, not them either. The world of today doesn't need countries or governments playing the role of a global policeman. Rather, what we need today is global leaders who are seriously and honestly committed to respecting the natural resources systems of law and political systems of every sovereign state. If we are to build 
a global community where all peoples can live together, there is no place whatsoever for new invasions, annexations, conquests, or even intermissions. We badly need compassion in the world of the 21st century. In today's world, we don't need countries or governments establishing hegemonic powers or cultural visions by means of economic manipulation, economic sanctions, or military operations. Rather, what we need are countries and governments who banish unfair, immoral, and greedy economic and political systems. We need countries and governments that banish the production of military and destructive armaments. We need countries and governments that invest in sustainable and ecological projects to create job opportunities for those who are forced to leave their places of origin for lack of them. Such an investment can prevent unwanted migration and help establish a better relationship between humans and their environment. The world of today, I say, needs past compassion. That is to say, mechanisms of peace based on global justice, the dignification of the weakest and the poor, and respect for the human rights of all. We need today institutions at the service of the humanization of persons, not at the service of multinational companies or economic systems that only think of profits and benefits for a small minority of plutocrats. We need international institutions that fight tax evasion, money laundering practices, an organized crime. It is time that the leadership, the sponsors, and supporters of international institutions like the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the United Nations, the World Health Organization, and NATO think seriously about establishing Pax Compassio. It is high time that all of them and all of us rethink the world that we are playing in, in a world where there is injustice, unfairness, and where violence is having its reign. I said at the beginning, not Pax Romana, but Pax Compassio. Thank you so much. <laughs>